Good morning. Hello, everybody. We are in a different location this morning. We thought, actually, as Charlie's been filming one of his clients down here, and we've got all the cameras and the lights and everything up. Um, oh, let me just mute myself. There we go. Um, that we'd do it down here. So we're actually in part of the shop section of the studio this morning. Um, good morning to you all. All oh, morning, Laurie. Uh, oh, Sharon's watching from upstairs. Uh, morning, Claire. Morning, Donna. There we go. Hello, everybody. So we are down in the shop in the studio. Well, the shop part of the studio today. We're in a section of the shop. Um, and I thought as it was a bit rubbish out there, it feels like it's sweatshirt weather, doesn't it, really? Um, we're supposed to be going to a festival, a local festival this weekend, because Charlie's running a, a photography workshop there. And I'm already thinking, nah, I've got to get my wellies back out again. How long has it been since I've worn my wellies? So, um, thought, yeah, thinking layers, Packamax, that kind of stuff, proper festival, proper British summer weather clothes now. Uh, morning, everybody. Morning, Alison. Morning, Janet. Hello, Jill. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Byrne. Hello, Carolyn. Hello, Jean. What's it? Oh, a real material shop. I know, yes. This is where we pull out all of the orders that we send out to you. Morning, Yasmin. Hello, how are you? So, right, this morning I thought I would just show you some of our... Oh, Mary's in a blustery Edinburgh. There we go. Lovely. Oops, here we go. Oh, yeah, Debbie says you like this. You can see the other fabrics behind you. I know. <laughs> so if there's anything that catches your eye, you can have a quick look on the website for it. Hi, MJ. How are you? So I just want to have a quick chat with and show you some of the sweatshirty fabrics. Now, these are perfect for the uh, Imogen, uh, not Imogen, Julia and the Regan sweatshirt, which are absolutely ideal. Now, this one, actually the two here are just gorgeous. These are so soft. They are really soft and kind of fleecy inside. And we did have, yeah, there we go. And let's see if I can pull out there. Now, yeah, there we go. I did, oh gosh, back in, back at the beginning of lockdown, I think I did a tutorial on how to put a neckband in. And I think I did it with a Paulina that I've cut. Actually, Paulina as well would work brilliantly with this. It's so soft. It's just scrummy. It really, really is. And we've got the beautiful blue stripe, which works really nicely with the lovely kind of pale baby blue. And we've also got the pink and the heathered gray, which works really nicely with this kind of chalky pink. So I think those are fabulous. Now the Paulina, people have hacked it and made it a bit shorter because we did it originally as like a kind of a sweatshirt dress and it's got an uneven hem, but people I know have kind of leveled the hems off. They've left off the band so you can do all kinds of different things with it. Um, the Regan, you could actually lengthen as well. Although it's a top, you could lengthen that and make it into a kind of a tunic or a dress and leave the cuffing detail off the bottom, which again would work really well. Do you know, I can, what can you, oh my God, we're right next door to a bakery and I can smell something really nice. Is it apple turnover? Oh, it could be. Oh no. If really had... I know. Oh. <laughs> It's been really nice smelling in here today, actually. Charlie's client this morning smelt really nice. His aftershave or whatever it was, was really nice. Every time I kept down, kind of creeping downstairs, I could get this waft of nice smelling man, which was quite nice, actually. So, um, and now it smells like apple turnovers. So it's awful here. Oh dear. There we go. Oh, yes, actually, do you know, I'm wondering whether we ought to do it down here more often, actually, because it's so much easier than yeah, lugging all the fabrics I'm, upstairs. I'm, 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 or are you going out a little bit so people can have a bit more of a look? Yeah, you won't be able to see the whole thing, but um, yeah, you can see a bit of it. There we I'm, go. We're panning around. Yeah. So, yeah, we have got a bigger section. We've got haberdashery over there. Oh, he's off on one now. Oh, look, he's I'm off. There. I'm off. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, yeah, do you want to come? Three, two, one, back in the room, Charlie, eh? Hello. <laughs> yeah, 
These cameramen with a mind of their own, honestly. Oh, I don't know, they're so rude. There we go. Oh, or Jan says it's at wet and windy, windy in Wensleydale. There we go. Actually, your brother was up there recently, wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, I love the blue. How do I order? Carolyn, if you go to our website, go to the uh, jersey. If you actually across the top of our website, there's a menu bar. Hover over fabrics and you get a little drop down menu that's got the different categories of fabrics that we do. If you then click on to the jersey and knit fabrics, it'll be in there and you'll find it. Um, in there. So click on that and you can just order directly through the website. Um, we will do a free PMP code, which will last because it's Bank Holiday Monday. We're going to extend it to the end of Bank Holiday for you, which is really good. Um, Leanne's off on holiday today, so I will put the free PMP code up in the comments um, later on after we've finished the Facebook Live. And I'll also put it into the email that's going to go out later on this afternoon as well. So that'll be good. So you'll have that as well. Uh, is there bunting on the ceiling? Yes, there is, Catherine. Well spotted. Yes. I'll, I'll go on a journey. Oh. <laughs> there is bunting all the way across. There we go. And I'll come back down now before you get too cross. <laughs> We're supposed to be flogging fabric today, Charlie. Come on. Sorry, darling. There we go. Right, so... We've, let's go back to the fabrics. Yes, so if you really like the blue or the pink, they are all available on the website. So go to sewmesomething.co.uk and they're all available in there. We will put links up later as well. Um, but if you like anything, make a note of it and then you can have a look at it on the website or go and pop it in a basket. And then when we put the free PMP code up, you can add that in later, which would be really good. Um, oh, Jan, you need denim. Actually, you're going to like what I'm going to show you later then, Jan. So hang fire because we've got some other nice things coming up. <laughs> Catherine said, hee hee, I knew it would annoy Jules. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Becky says, morning, glad to be here. Usually working Tuesdays and Fridays. Oh good, so you've joined us live. Oh, Jean says hello from an autumnal, autumnal damp land's end. Ooh, I hope, yeah, it has been raining rather a lot down in Cornwall, hasn't it? I saw... Um, some pictures on the news of Lou in Cornwall that's been a bit flooded. So I hope everybody all right, is all right down there because that's actually where we're headed very shortly. Um, back to the fabrics. This rib, the pink and heathered grey, actually goes really nicely with this one too, which is our kind of, it looks like sort of like Swedish folk art. But again, this has got this lovely kind of plushy sort of soft yumminess inside actually which is really nice really really lovely there we are oh oh no Rosie can't sew at the moment but what you could do Rosie is get your projects planned and get your fabrics in so that when you can sew you're ready to go that's actually quite nice. so because people do have have said to me before that actually sewing is one hobby and purchasing fabric is an entirely different one. So you could still partake if you wanted to. There we go. Um, was that a quilting hoop on the Habby wall? Yes, it was, Susan. We've got all kinds of different things in our Habby section, actually. So do go and have, have a look and check it out because we've got quite a lot of stuff in there at the moment. Um, and we've got more stuff coming in next week. We've got more fabrics coming in next week. I was hoping they were going to be here. But for some reason, it just seems to be really slow getting fabrics here. We order them and then it seems to take forever to get here. So I'm hoping over the next couple of weeks, we're going to get a lot more stuff in, which will be really good. Um, oh, Laura says, is the shop where all the machines were lined up? Yes, part of it is. Yes. So we've still got the studio um, and that's going to be, uh, we're in the process of kind of rejigging that around so that we can run workshops again. Um, but yes, so we've got the, the shop part is kind of downstairs. There we go. Nice to see more of my domain. <laughs> That's where you put my domain. Yes. So sweatshirty fabrics. It's getting a bit cold out there. I think we've seen the last of the summer now, quite frankly. We may get a few kind of Indian summer kind of days in September, but otherwise... I'm going to be looking to my sweatshirty fabric and my comfy things now. So we've got the kind of Swedish folk art one. Now, I can't remember what it's called. I will be able to tell you in a minute. Actually, what's it called? Alpine fleece, this one, 
which I think is really cute. And it goes really nicely, just picks out that lovely kind of pink in the uh, pink and heathered grey stripe. I'm going to pop, start popping these away so that we can get some of the other ones out to show you. So I'll pop that back now. There we go. And we've got, so we've got the pink and heathered grey and we've got the blue stripe, which is lovely. Now this, I think, goes really nicely with some of the linens too. So I'm going to leave the ribs out for a bit. But we've got the pink sweatshirt so this is lovely this is the one that's got the really nice kind of fleece inside there we go oh it's lovely you just kind of want to stroke it you know kids have those little kind of feely blanket things that's exactly what it feels like it's really nice um, and it makes up beautifully i have a paulina in the slightly darker version that we had of this um, which we've got coming back in again which is rather good and then we've got the kind of baby blue. It's quite a soft powder blue, which is really lovely. This is the kind of thing that you kind of want to put on, you know, when you've had a nice hot bath and you want to go and sit and get cosy and watch a box set on Netflix with uh, a few gins. This is exactly the kind of thing that you want to curl up with, actually. Um, I love it. It's really nice and soft. So let's move those out of the way. And then we've got something that's a bit brighter. Now, these are quite funky, actually. I love these. And we've got the, let me move those out of the way so you can see those better. And we've got the ribs that kind of match them too. They're all part of the same range. This I love. Again, it's got that lovely kind of soft, um, it's a loop back, but it's, no, it's actually a fleecy one. There we go. It's not as soft and fluffy as the previous two, but um, it's still quite nice. There we go. Let's have a quick look. See what we've missed. There we go. Morning, Rachel. Morning, Julia. Um, are we thinking of starting Sassy Up Club soon? Uh, I don't know. We're still thinking about Sassy, to be honest. Um, Sassy was our social sewing night that we used to run um, every fortnight and then we did it every week. And it's kind of like, yeah, we're kind of seeing where we are with that at the moment um, because we just want to try things out with workshops and see how they go. Um, but who knows? Catherine says, I think should... <laughs> Jules should do a tour and visit us all in our sewing domains like a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm really not. Let me just tell you now. <laughs> Becky says, I look like I'm feeling cold in my layers. Well, I did think that it was going to be a little bit chilly, although the sun's, oh no, actually it is raining out there now. So yes, I've got my Breton out. I've got my Breton out. I like a nice striped t-shirt because it kind of goes with everything, doesn't it, really? Um, navy striped t-shirt, that's my uniform. Uh, Charlie says, does that fleece come in navy? That particular one doesn't, but we have got some more coming in and I'm hoping they're going to be with us in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully, so it'll be sod's law. They'll arrive while I'm on holiday. Um, and we will. We are going to, I'm trying, going to try and persuade Sharon to do Fabric Friday while I'm away. <laughs> it should be quite amusing. Um, uh, Catherine says, what is Alpine fleece? Is it sweatshirt material? Yes, it is. It's like a normal kind of jersey, but it has that lovely kind of soft plushy sort of back to it so it's really nice and kind of squishy which is lovely um, so yeah it would be brilliant for um, Paulina for Reagan for Julia um, I'm trying to think if you could do anything else with it well yeah those are probably the best three to start off with peas blossom you could do a peas in it if you wanted like a, a short one to kind of get layered which is really good um, let's have a look do you need a special needle for those fleecy fabrics? If you're just doing it on the overlocker, which I would do, um, you can put jersey needles on your overlocker and that should be fine. I tend to try out a test piece first with ordinary needles in just to see how it works. Sometimes you can get away with it, but most of the time you're gonna to need to put jersey needles in your overlocker. It's always best to put the needles in that correspond to your fabric. So if you're working with jersey or stretch fabric, you're going to need ballpoint or stretch needles. Okay. Um, 
And how about if you're using just a... Oh, same applies if you're using a normal sewing machine. Yeah, yeah if you just want to sew it with a, a stretch stitch and a walking foot on a sewing machine, then you're going to need to put your ballpoint or your stretch needle in there as well. And we've got more information in the sewing studio about sewing with jersey. Um, we've got the Love Your Overlocker course, which is in the sewing studio as well. And we've just put the Cordelia dress course up in the sewing studio. And that's got information in it about working with jersey fabrics, whether you're using a sewing machine or an overlocker or a cover stitch machine as well. So you've got quite a lot of information in there already about working with jersey knit fabrics, which is quite cool. Um, so, oh, Debbie says you'd like a teal or a duck egg sort of colour if possible. Debbie, watch this space. We've got some lovely things coming. Uh, Karen says, oh no, I love the pink, the pink rib. Um, if you just go to the website, <laughs> Sharon's face. <laughs> we have spoken about this, Sharon. So, um, yeah, I need to, let me actually, let me just double check and see if I can find out what this fabric is called. And then I can, the fleecy one. Um, yeah, Sue says, <laughs> see Sharon, Sharon, there's a lot of love for you here getting on the camera we'll see what we could do i'm going to see if i can quickly find out what this fabric is called and then oh where is it no i've got too many tabs open as um, usual as too many wish. tabs open on my computer because i'm doing 10 million things at once and in your brain and in my brain yeah <laughs> There we go. Let me see if I can find. Oops, no. In the, the meanwhile, I'm very good to swing the camera around to other parts of the shop. <laughs> no, really don't, because it looks an absolute mess at the moment because we're trying to sort everything out. <laughs> so, yeah. Right, let's have a quick look and see if I can find the fleecy fabrics for you. Um, there we go. It's called. Alpen Fleece Baby Blue and Alpen Fleece Dusty Plum. And then we've got Alpen Fleece, Alpine Fleece in green, which are the three that I've just shown you. The ones I'm going to show you now, we've got, I love this, the name for this is brilliant. We've called this Yeah Baby. <laughs> it is really Austin Powers, isn't it? But it's gorgeous. Again, this is another one of those that has that really gorgeous soft fleece that kind of plushy fleece and it's fabulous it's like a proper grass green it's really nice but this goes really nicely with the orange rib that we've got so actually the two of those together look fabulous they really do so this is called yeah baby there we go uh, could you make a dress in the fleecy fabric um, you could, Catherine. It would need to be like a sweatshirt dress. You wouldn't be able to, it would be too thick, I think, to make something like Miranda um, or Helena because don't forget, you've got that thickness of, of fabric there. So you don't want anything that's going to have too much detail on it, really. Um, oh, is it retro clover? Yes, the, we've also got retro clover, Carolyn, underneath here. So this one's Yeah Baby. And that goes brilliantly with the orange. And then we've also got, these are Retro Clover. So let me just double check and see the colours on here. There we go. Note this on the first page. Let's have a quick look. So it's extremely entertaining. There we go. Yes, it is. Retro oh, Clover. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. There we go. We've got Retro Clover blue and retro clover pink which again work really nicely with the electric blue and the lipstick and actually the orange picks out that blue as well and these are really nice so the a regan in these would look really funky um they're amazing in actual fact we had a lady amy who bought lots last when we put it on first time round and um and it looked so amazing when we were putting her order together with all these lovely bright fabrics with the um, ribbons to go with them. Uh, Becky says, what's the right weight for a knit fabric dress? Becky, it depends entirely on what your dress is, really. Um, you could make a dress out of anything from a light T-shirt fabric through to something that's like a heavy 
double knit crepe um, or a ponte roma. It depends on the styling detail in the dress um, and whether you want it very stretchy and loose or whether you want it more tight fitting. Normally you'll find um, on your, the button of your pattern information, there'll be recommended fabrics. So it's always worth having a look at those and going by those recommendations, really. Um, we are getting more jersey fabrics. We've got some more Ponte Roma coming in in the autumn. We're just starting to get some of the autumn fabrics coming through now. So hopefully there'll be something there that you quite like. Um, but you could use, these are all single jersey. Um, but they would make up really nicely in a dress as well. So these are all our AGF um, single t-shirt weight jerseys. These are, this is actually French terry, but we have done a Cordelia in this, so that would work really nicely as well. I'm just trying to think of what else we've got. No, those are all single jerseys as well. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's given you something there. Uh... Oh, Catherine says, oh my God, it's gorgeous. Yeah, baby. I know it is, isn't it? We were kind of like, oh my God, is this just too much? But actually, it is rather fabulous. There we go. Um, morning, Maria. How are you? There we go. Talking to fabric notes on patterns. What is meant by nap? Catherine, nap is not literally having a nap, although at the moment I do actually feel like doing that. But uh, nap is where you've got... Um, fabric that works in one direction only so if you think of velvet when you brush it it goes smooth or you brush against the pile so that's traditionally what a nap is corduroy has the same kind of thing some of these fleeces so these plush fleece will have a nap because when you brush it one way it goes smooth and then you brush it the other way and it kind of ruffles it up so if you think of yeah brushing cat fur up the wrong way, that kind of thing. Um, but also it applies to um, a fabric if it's got a directional print. So it basically just means that you need to have all of your pattern pieces going in the same direction. You can't top and tail kind of thing. That's all it means. So you might need a little bit of extra fabric if your pattern or if your fabric has a nap or a one-way print. So double check your pattern layout and that should tell you. There we go. Oh, Emma, so the office is quiet, so having a quick, a cheeky listen in. Hello, how are you? <laughs> there we go. What's the difference between single jersey and what, Jan? And the other one? Uh, single there. jersey. This is a, uh, a sweatshirting fleece, so it's obviously a heavier fabric. And a single jersey is basically um, stocking stitch. So if you were going to knit a jumper in stocking stitch in really, really fine yarn, that's what you'd get with single jersey. You can tell it's single jersey because it will normally roll up. If you get the cut edge and stretch it, it will kind of roll up onto itself. And that way is quite a good way of checking that it's single jersey. There we go. So we've got these ones. So we've got Yeah Baby, which I love. I think it's so cool. Um, let me pop that back over there. And we've got the Alpen Fleece in blue and pink. So let me move those out the way. And then we can have another little look and see what else we've got. Let's pop that up there. And that one, this is the pink one, which I think is really quite cool actually, I like this. Now we've also got parrots. And these are quite funky as well. They're, look at those, I love those. They're so, I think they're really funny. They're so cute. So we've got blue parrots and we've got pink parrots. Actually, this one's upside down. There we go. But again, they work really nicely with the electric blue and we've got the dark magenta. So that actually looks much nicer with that one rather than the lipstick. But I think you could put orange with them as well. I think that's what, that would look quite nice too. I quite like orange and purple. I like a bit of clashing. There we go. What do you think of those ones? There we go. The orange green is beautiful. Do you have ribbon that would go with that? Yes, Maria. The orange rib that we've got here goes with the uh, green and orange flowers, which we've called Yeah Baby. So that's quite a nice mix together, those ones. 
Yeah, baby, sweatshirt with the green furry reverse used on the cuffs, neck and hem. Absolutely. I think that would be really cool. You could even do it the other way around. So you have the outside of the body with the furry side on the outside and use the print for the neckband and cuffs. That would look quite cool too. Yasmin, love the parrots. I know, they're so cute, aren't they? I think they're really funny, really funky. And again, it goes, it could kind of mix and match with lots of different things, which is really nice, actually. These would look fab with a pair of, um, you know, like white jeans or denim shorts or something like that. Just a kind of an extra layer at the moment that you're going to need. I still don't really want to put my boots and stuff on just yet. I'm hoping I might not have to use my wellies this weekend, but... I think it would be probably wise. I think it is definitely going to be wellies weekend, isn't it, really? But there we go. So that's the kind of sweatshirting. That's some of our sweatshirting fabric that we've got there. This is fleecy. Um, it's a soft... It's the same kind of backing as the um, retro clover. So it's not plushy kind of fluffy furry fleece but it is still really nice and soft so it'd be lovely next to your skin there we go oh i was thinking of extending a t-shirt into a trapeze type dress would those cozy fabrics work yeah absolutely they would be great uh oh mary what pattern is my top i'm wearing the hippolyta today in the lovely goodnight navy which has got a little bit crumpled this morning um but i love it it's great and it's just and it's really nice because it's kind of dress length as well um and it's got pockets gotta have pockets gotta have pockets and everything um could you make a reversible sweatshirt you probably could actually diane yeah if you cover stitched the seams or even flat locked the seams because don't forget you're going to see the seams on the outside unless you line it but you're still going to have, yeah, you could, there is, a, there would be a way around it, I'm sure. Um, it depends on how you want to do it. Um, there we go. So Debbie, yes, it's fleecy. The parrot fabric is fleecy, but not as fleecy as Yeah Baby or the Alpen fleece. Um, Rosa, would Yeah Baby suit Paulina? Oh yeah, that would be really nice, actually. That would be fabulous. Yeah, definitely go for that. That would be lovely. Um, is it easy to put ribbing on sweatshirt fabric? It absolutely is, yeah. Don't, no, don't stay stitch. Um, don't stay, because you want that give. So basically what you want to do, it depends on what you're doing, if you're putting rib on a neckline. If you're putting rib onto a woven neckline, like I do quite often with the Julia top um, or the Regan, you can stay stitch because you don't want the neckline on the woven fabric to become distorted and what you do is you cut the ribs smaller so that that stretches to fit your neckline um, and it's actually really easy to do it's so easy to do um, we've done uh, youtube right at the back of, of beginning of lockdown we did a three-day session on um, making up the julia in woven fabric and um, i covered how to put the neck band on on day three of that i think um, so go over to our YouTube channel and that will be on there as well. Um, but we also cover things like how to put the neckbands on and things like that in the Love Your Overlocker course, which is in the sewing studio. So which is quite a nice one to follow because that's got lots of information on how to use the get the, mess, the get the most out of your overlocker, basically how to change the settings, how to thread it and everything like that, which is really good. So let's have a quick look. Yes, Mary, you definitely need the Hippolyta pattern. I love it. We, and I've made up a couple in some of the really nice big um, printed cotton lawns as well, which is lovely. And it's brilliant because you can just layer it over stuff, which is fabulous. Um, there we go. <laughs> Jean says, whenever you visit Cornwall for holes, pack your bikini, wetsuit, wellies, plus sou'wester, ready for all types of weather. I'm so totally with you. That's just basically holidaying in the UK, isn't it, really? Yes. Um, Rosie... What pattern was I wearing on Tuesday? What was I wearing on Tuesday? Oh, it was the Julia, but I'd used some of the cuffing with it already. So this is stripy cuffing. Now I was used, I think I used the ice cream 
with the um, chalky pink linen that we've got. Now we've sold out of the ice cream one, um, but I can get more. But this is brilliant because this just acts as a kind of a ready-made cuff. One, they come as kind of pre-cut strips. So one strip will be enough to do your neckline and your cuffs, which is brilliant. If you want to do a waistband as well, you'll need another strip. Um, but it's lovely and I think this is brilliant. This goes perfectly with um, some of the navy, with the linens that we've got, which I think are really nice. Actually, oh, look, that looks really nice with that. Oh, oh, right, I'm going to show you that later. Okay. So that's sweatshirting stuff that we've got there. Uh, there we go. Oh, Debbie, you've done the overlock and you totally recommend it. Brilliant. Oh, that's good. I'm glad you've enjoyed it and you've got stuff out of it. That's fantastic. That's what it's all about. Right, let's move these out of the way. There we go. And now I can show you some of the wovens. Let's move those at the back there. So we... I know it is actually it is yes it really is maybe we should do more down here who knows actually yes uh, what length is the cuffing um, off the top of my actually let me get a bit I can measure it there we go let's have a quick look so it's, it's about a metre ten in length, roughly. There we go. And it's about five centimetres wide. So you'll need to lose a centimetre at least for your seam allowance. So you're going to get about four centimetres of cuff showing, which is actually quite nice. It's just about right. There we go. So I thought... We're kind of getting a little bit more autumnal now. I thought I would just show you these ones again because they're quite nice. And I might go and grab something from over there as well in a sec. But this is lovely. This is artsy leaf, which I think is really pretty. And actually, I think it works really nicely with some of the darker kind of denim fabrics that I wanted to show you as well. Because we don't always put those into um, Fabric Friday purely because it means I've got to lug them upstairs. But actually, as we're down here... It means I can show you a bit more now, which is quite nice. So this is lovely, actually. And this goes brilliantly with um, ooh, this beautiful ochre laundered linen. There we go. Oops. Oh, I need to lose weight to get through here. There we go. But that actually works really nicely together with that, which I think is beautiful. Those are really nice, actually. So you could have, I don't know, uh, trousers and skirts, actually Desdemona's skirt with a nice kind of image and top or an iris top out of this. Would look really nice with a pair of wide leg Porsche in the ginger linen, which I think is really lovely. Actually works really nicely. This also looks really nice with the teal linen as well. Let me move that one out of the way. Oh, this is Altamare. And again, that works really nicely with the artsy leaf. So you can see those together again. That's really nice. I like that. I really like that, actually. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can't, can't see questions. I'm going to have to put that down so I can read. How would you combine those then? I think, actually, an Imogen Porsche trousers in this would be really, really nice. And then with an image and top would look really good too. Or you could put, um, we have got some teal ribbing coming. So you could even do a, um, like a regan, a smart regan with teal ribbing at the neck and the cuffs with using the artsy leaf as the body, actually. That would be really nice. And then have a pair of, um, a pair of trousers to go with it. Or even a long Desdemona skirt. Or you could actually, what would look quite funky, is actually make the viola out of the two different colours, which would look really good. And then you could do that piping. You know, we did the piping on Technic Tuesday. Um, you could put a contrast piping through each colourway, which would look quite effective. That would be rather nice. 
Let me just have a look. There we go. Oh, uh, so is that in the sewing studio on videos available if you join? Yes, it is. So the Love Your Overlocker is one of our in-depth courses that we do. Um, we've also done the Cordelia dress, which is all about sewing with Jersey as well. And we've got other little tutorials on different needles that you need to use and things like that as well. And we're going to be putting more in. It's time at the moment, unfortunately. There we go. Uh, I know it's nice, isn't it? Uh, oh, Debbie says the videos are really useful. Plus you can stop, start and rewind. That's brilliant. There are a few patterns too worth trying. We're going to be doing a lot more and um, because now Rachel's joined us who's going to help me to do the content. So we'll be, we've been planning out loads of stuff this week and it's going to look amazing. It really is. I'm really excited. But it's going to take a little bit of time to get us because I, unfortunately there is only me. And unless I can clone myself, no. which Charlie won't let me do, um, there are only so many hours in the day at the moment. So we're trying to get through as much as we possibly can, which is why I've now got Rachel on board. So she's going to be really good and she's going to help. Um, we've also been trying to fit holidays in because, you know, we were all supposed to have had holidays during lockdown and we didn't go anywhere. So now we've got to try and fit holidays in at the moment. You're probably finding this as well if you're back at work at the moment. It's like, you know, you've got, I don't know, 10 people in your team and they've all got to take holiday before the end of the year. So it's like, how are we going to fit that in? So we're trying to do that at the moment as well. So it's, it's like we're juggling lots of plates, but it's all good fun. So there we go. Um, Linda, you've had your overlocker for 15 years and never used it. This is a hands on hips moment. This is, oh my word. You seriously need to get to grips with your overlocker because they are fabulous. They really are. And it will take your sewing up another level completely. It really will. They are actually a joy and a bliss to work with. I strongly recommend that if it's pouring hard and miserable outside, you get it out the box, give it a little stroke and some nice kind words and have a play. I really would. It will take your sewing up to such another level. It really would. Um, there we go. Yep, see, Debbie, don't take my word for it. Listen to what Debbie says. Debbie says, um, yeah, she had hers for a year, then did the course, and now she loves it and she's planned to upgrade. So that's brilliant. There is, Catherine, there is so much more you can do with an overlocker. Yeah. Yeah, Emma says, your overlocker is 30 years old and is essential to your sewing. I know, you see, you have it. You've got your sewing machine and then you've got your overlocker and you just kind of switch between the two as you're sewing. So you sew a seam, neat knit, do a hem, sew it up, you know, that kind of thing. And they are absolutely brilliant. And then when you get into sewing knitwear, that's when you're going to need to have your extra cover stitch machine. So you're going to need a longer table. So you've got all three of them on there, which is really cool. Um, Oh, Sam says, what fabric would work well for an iris? Actually, iris works in lots of different kinds of fabrics. So anything that's like slightly drapey, um, so any of the viscous rayons or the luxury crepe would work really nicely, or something like this, which is the um, artsy leaf, because this is a cotton chalice. So you can kind of see it has that lovely sort of wobble to it. That's rather nice. But equally, we've made up, the blue one with the little collar that you might have noticed on the rail behind me in my studio, we made that out of the laundered linen and that works just as well. So you've got several different options with iris, which is rather nice. Um, you can just keep the collar and uh, lose the frill or you can kind of customise the frill or you could have both or you could have neither. And it's just a really nice little shape actually. And because it's got that princess seam, it's easier to make alterations to fit over the bust which is a big help too. Um, so actually I would do, an, you could do an iris in this, which would be lovely with, um, with a nice linen bottom half or do it any other way. Actually, you could have a skirt in the artsy leaf and then an iris top in one of the two linens there, which would work. Um, this is a similar fabric. This one is called Diamonds in the Dark. There we go which again, I, we've got a really lovely dark olive linen coming in, which would work beautifully with this. 
Um, and I think it's worth unwinding fabrics because they look so much more yummy, actually, when you see them as a whole piece. When you just look at them on the, on the shelf, you're only looking like this little tiny bit, aren't you? You can't really see the beauty of the fabric. Um, there we go. Oh, Linda's got a cover stitch machine too. You've, but you've never plucked up the courage to use that either. Linda, come on. I think you need to get them out the box and get them sorted because this is the whole point, isn't it? It's actually, and do you know what though? It's quite empowering as well. If you kind of have got something that you're really kind of oh, not sure about and you actually sit down and get to grips with it, how great are you going to feel afterwards? Knowing that you've got it sorted and actually it's going to take your sewing up another level, which I think is really cool. There we go. Oh, I'm just having a look. Oh, Alison loves princess seams. I know what you mean. There we go. Could you sew a linen and that diamonds in the dark in a colour block dress? Um, you could. You need to be a little bit careful when you are combining fabrics. Ideally, you're going to want things that are roughly the same kind of weight. Because if you're you know, creating panels and stuff, unless you've got something like um, you're doing a tunic and then you're putting a nice lighter weight bit onto the skirt part of it or something like that, that would work. But if you've got, if you're making like a lighter weight sheer, not sheer, but lighter crepey viscose fabric on the top, and then you're putting something heavier on the bottom, it's going to drag your fabric. So you want to be a little bit careful. But actually, this with a laundered linen would probably work quite well. Um, but don't forget, we do swatches as well. So you can always order those first so that you can feel before you buy, which is quite a nice way of doing it. Um, all these, I know, all these expensive machines sitting in boxes, Helen. I know, I know. Oh, Angie says, is moon thread okay for jersey fabrics? Yep, Angie, we use that all the time. We put it on overlockers and I use it on the cover stitch machine as well. And it's absolutely fine. And we've got lots. So I would go for it. Don't forget, you're going to need four for your overlocker. I tend to be a little bit extravagant and I always buy five because I've got four on my overlocker and one on my machine. You can, if you're doing twin needling or anything like that, you can always wind another bobbin and use that as your extra spool. But I would always get five. So I've got four on my overlocker and one on my sewing machine, which keeps me happy. Um, oh, Donna says, oh, you'd love with cover stitch. I know they are really nice. Can you use your overlocker as a cover stitch machine if you disengage the blade? Um, up to a point. But don't forget, the throat on your overlocker is tiny because you're only normally doing edges. So you're not going to be able to push a whole garment through there like you would on a sewing machine. You can do something called flat locking, which is with two stitches, two threads. You use um, the left needle and the lower looper. And we go through that in the Love Your Overlocker course. So what you're doing is you're sewing a seam, but then you kind of slide that seam open. It gives you a kind of a decorative stitch. So that could be one way to kind of get round it. Cover stitch, you could just use a twin needle on a normal sewing machine as well. Although that isn't as stretchy as the stitch that you get on a cover stitch machine. That will give a lot more with your fabric, which is why it's probably better in the long run if you can use one, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, so it will kind of go on your, you could put it on your Christmas list, couldn't you, your wish list. Um, there we go. Uh, what is a cover stitch? Cover stitch, Catherine does hemming. That's basically what it's done, what it does. Again, all these machines have kind of come from industry. So a normal sewing machine is just a lock stitch because it has two threads that lock together. They twist, so it's not going to undo. A cover stitch will do some things like chain stitch. So if you've got a hem on a ready-made garment and it comes undone, more than likely it's, it's stitched with a, a cover stitch machine just using a chain stitch. Um, because they can come undone quite easily, but they're brilliant for using with knit fabrics. Um, and a cover stitch comes with three needle options. So you could, they're really good for sewing um, sportswear, performance wear, that kind of thing. Um, but you'll have a look, if you have a look at t-shirts or normal manufactured garments, they will, vast majority of them will have, will have been stitched with a cover stitch. So on my t-shirt, because this is a, um, a Bowden one. So this has just got twin needling on the cuff and it looks like an overlocking underneath. That's just cover stitch. 
You can get a similar effect, as I said, with a normal sewing machine, but it's not as stretchy. So there are kind of ways around them, but obviously, if you get the right tools for the job, life is so much easier. But it's whether you want to go to that expense. They're quite often on um, eBay or FreeCycle or somewhere like that, because again, people get them and they don't really know what to do with them. So they kind of offload them again. So you might pick, pick one up secondhand quite cheaply. There we go. Uh, let's have a quick look and see. Claire, I'm quite happy to push you over the edge of the cliff if you really want to go and get a cover stitch machine. They are brilliant and I do love mine, I have to say. Um, there we go. Do you know what, Donna? Actually, I find some of the best presents are the ones you buy yourself. So though you may have had it on your Christmas list, if you treat yourself, you're going to value it a lot more because you've earned it and you're worth it, as they say off the hair shampoo advert. Um, What's it called? A cover stitcher. Yes, a cover stitch machine. That's what it is. And they are very, very lovely. Uh, what types of fabrics are these? Are these the ones that we're looking at? So we've got a diff, we've got a combination here. We've got a couple of cotton chalice, which are the sort of drapey viscosy ones. And then we've got some cotton lawn. So this was diamonds in the dark. And we've got artsy leaf, which goes really nicely with both the altamere and the ginger linen. Then we've got, oh, I quite like this. I quite fancy one of these, a Hippolyta in this. This is called Hands On. And I actually quite like that. I think that's quite cool. This is just cotton lawn. So it's dead easy to work with. It's really nice to wear and it behaves itself when you make it. So it's lovely. But I think in order to make the most of the pattern, you need something like uh, Helena, Amelia, Kate, Hippolyta. Um, you probably could get away with it with a Celia actually, and that would look quite cool. So that you've got something where you can actually see the pattern, which would be nice. Um, there we go. I do, do you know what? How many times, maybe we could do a, a, like a lottery or something on how many times I say, there we go. Oh. It's like, I know, <laughs> it's like my vocal tick, isn't it? I'm really sorry. There we go. Oh, oh see, I did it. <laughs> There's no hope. There's no really, hope. You, you have to pay a pound every time you say it. I'd be rich. You would. That would keep you in cake, wouldn't it? God. <laughs> yeah. Right. What? What is moon thread? Moon thread is just basically a poly cotton thread. Um, I'm going to grab one and show you. There we go. They come on cops like this, um, and there is a thousand meters on there. Um, so they're much better value than buying the Gutterman 100 meter reels. Um, our machines love them. We use them all the time. Sometimes people get a little bit sniffy about it, but it's we've used it all the time. It's just a workhorse thread and it's fab. It's just a, co a poly cotton. It's made by Coates, which is a reputable kind of brand company anyway. Um, and it comes in loads of different colours too, which is quite a nice one. So you get these and they're not, I think they're about two quid a spool. So actually, it's not going to break the bank. Um, I would tend to get, if once you're just starting using your overlocker, get basic colours like black, navy, white, grey, that kind of thing. And then you can kind of overlock more or less anything, which is good. Um, oh, Jan says you've got to be careful on pattern placement. Yes, you don't want hands on your boobs, do you really? Well, that could look quite funny. But there we are. Oh, no, I did it again. What brand of cover stitch? Ah, there we go. Nope. I can't help it. I'm like, I'm just like, I've got, yeah. Can't do it, can't do it now. Oh no, Catherine says I've got lots of phrases I use regularly. Oh dear. They're all gonna start coming out now, aren't they? Um, right. Is there a get to know your sewing machine part to the sewing studio? I have just bought a new machine and only, know how to use straight stitch and zigzag, but now have all sorts of stitches. I don't know what to use them for or how they work. We did actually, Yvonne, we did a session. It was a Technique Tuesday session. So it'll be on YouTube about getting to know your machine and actually creating a stitch library. And it is just going through your handbook that comes with your machine, which most of us ignore, me included. Um, but actually it is well worthwhile having a look and going through 
and just doing a little, creating like a, a swatch book, a little swatch library of all the different stitches that your machine does. And that way you'll learn to understand what's, what stitches are for what thing, which are decorative, which actually have a function, which ones are stretch stitch, and that way you'll be able to make a better informed choice as to what you need to do with your machine, depending on what project you're working on. So I would just have an afternoon on a wet Wednesday and just get yourself some scraps of calico or cotton or something and just literally go through and do all of the stitches. I like calico because you can write on it. So you can write in biro or felt it pen or whatever you want to, what the stitch is, and then you can make a few notes as to what you can use it for. And that way it really will help you get to know your machine. It's one of those things. All machines are slightly different. Um, they will have, they all work in the same kind of way, whether they're a top loader or a front loader or whatever, but the stitches will do similar kinds of things. It is just a question of sitting down and, and using your own machine, really, and getting to grips with it, which is actually quite a nice thing to do. Get a nice little play or an audio book on and just play with your machine. Right. There we go. Oh, no. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> ha, I say, Claire says, I say, that, that is that a lot on my video. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's awful, isn't it? Really cool. There you go. Good morning. I really love it. Really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh no, this is like, this is like when you have children or grandchildren and your own words come back to you, isn't it really? <laughs> there we go. Oh dear. I've done it again. I don't, don't care. I don't care now. I'm losing count. <laughs> oh, Becky says, oh, you're going to have a go at doing school trousers. You're going to have a use at doing blind hem. Actually, we did a blind hem technique Tuesday as well, which will be on YouTube too. So that's quite a nice one to have a look at too. Right, so we've got hands on. You can put the hands wherever you like. Oh, sorry. There we go. Getting told off now. <laughs> we've also got, now I quite like this one. This is a bit sort of mid-century, which is lovely. It's called Cocktail Hour. Again, cotton lawn, but I really like the colours in that. Now, there's a lovely lady who goes by the Instagram handle of Plum Kitchen, who's in New Zealand, and I know that she's used this to make up a frock, and it looked fabulous it really did it, I love it it's quite kind of subtle and then you've got these little tiny pops of cherry red on it which are lovely and they're the little kind of cherries and olives in your drink but that would look fabulous in a Hippolyta or uh, an Amelia and I think that's great actually that's that one Again, we've got something slightly, slightly, slightly darker, a little bit autumnally today we've gone for. This is uh, Robin, which is actually quite cool. And I love this because it's got this beautiful dark orange print on it. Now the background, this is a cotton lawn as well. It's actually a very deep, dark aubergine, which is rather nice. You could put it with navy, I suppose, but actually if you put it up against navy, it does look a lot more purple. But this would look great in, um, actually it would be really nice in an, uh, an, like an Imogen top. I think that would look lovely. But this is very cute and it's got little, little birds printed on it, which is rather nice. Um, again, it hasn't, you kind of think, looking at it, it isn't a directional print, so you could top and tail. So this is a fabric that doesn't have a nap. There we go, going back to what we were talking about earlier on. So this is Robin. And then we've got Showering Vine. Now we've got this in several different colourways actually, which I might pull out in a sec. But this is lovely. This has got like a kind of a russet sort of flower detail in there, which is really nice. We've got it coming in the silver version. So Showering Vine Silver, which is really pretty. Um, we've also got it in old gold as well which is lovely some of you may have seen we did an iris in this one and we used we did the iris with the frill or the flounce going through it um, and we actually used the overlocker doing a rolled hem edge in gold to edge the frill which is really pretty actually i don't think i think it's upstairs yeah but that's nice. 
Oh, Jane says she's going to be turning up school trousers too. It's that time of year, isn't it? Uh, Jane's just joined. Yes, we did show fabric with hands on, Jane. Yes, and it's called Hands On. There we go. Which I really love. In fact, I love all of these. They're beautiful. There we go. So that's what we've got in terms of cottons. Now, they would work really nicely with some of the heavier weight denims that we've got. And this is really nice. This is a 10 ounce denim. So it's a little bit more structured but it has got a teeny bit of give to it so it'd be great for a pair of trousers or um, a straight skirt as well that would work really nicely oops this is indigo denim and it's a 10 ounce weight so it's a little bit heavier than normal but it gives, so you could got something that's with a bit more structure for this, which is rather nice, actually. There we go. Um, in terms of the, the patterns, do you, do you use it for? Um, this would be brilliant for Hero. You could make a pair of nice, really wide uh, Porsche trousers, which would look lovely. It would be great in a Miranda dress as well, because that's got a little bit more structure to it. Um, I would, we've got, we've, we've got it because we've got other things planned which would be really nice. You make a pinafore dress, a um, pair of dungarees, all kinds of different things. So it doesn't necessarily have to be one of ours, but um, yeah, Hero would work, Porsche would work, Miranda would work, Ursula would work as a kind of a pinafore dress. Um, I'm trying to think what else we've got. I can't even remember what patterns we've got today. <laughs> but yeah, four of those would give you really good options there. Um, and I like it because it's a really dark denim. It's a proper indigo. This is quite nice. And it's actually got a stripe in it, which is a grey denim. Grey denim stripe. Again, a similar kind of weight. So it's a little bit heavier. But again, would make up really nicely in the, in the Hero, the Porsche, Ursula, um, or the Miranda, which would be great. Oops. Oh, that's nice, Jane, actually. Yeah, if you've got, yeah. Mm, what's that? She's, um, your sister does, works with, uh, does sign language. So hands are very prominent in her life. Yeah, so cool. I think that would be a lovely idea. There we are. So we've got those two, which are slightly darker. Now we've got this one, which is lovely. Actually, Sharon has made an Amelia in this, which is a navy and white check. This isn't really a denim, but it is um, a cotton, like a cotton drill. So it's not as heavy as the other two, a little bit softer, but this would be really nice. Actually, you could do the um, Desdemona skirt or the Viola in this would be really nice. It would make up beautifully in Amelia or Helena. Um, or even Hippolyta actually would be quite nice too. Kate would be lovely in this. That would work really nicely. That would work brilliantly. Um, and then we've also got our normal kind of eight ounce denim, which I love. I would make everything up in this actually. In fact, I've been making a shirt dress in this for another project. Um, as with most denims, I would wash them first because the colour may come out. It's always better to kind of double check first. Um, I know for a fact with this eight ounce, it is better to pre-wash um, because I've been making it and I've ended up with blue hands, which is you know an interesting look when you're dressmaking. Um, but I love the feel of it. It's a really nice soft denim. So you could make We've made the uh, Miranda dress sample up in this, which is really nice. Um, and I've also made a Kate. You might have seen the denim Kate dress when we've been at shows. Um, Ursula I've got in this as well. Um, I've also got a denim Helena that we made as part of the online course that we do for Helena. 
Um, I think it's just a lovely, really nice fabric actually. And um, perfect if you're doing the jeans workshop too. In fact, all of these would be brilliant if you're doing the jeans workshop with us. We've just put up um, another date in February. So the one that we've got in September is now full, um, but you can come back and join us again for the Jeans Masterclass in February, which is a three day workshop, which I'm really excited about teaching coming up very soon. Um, so all of these would work brilliantly for uh, jeans patterns that you may have. And we're gonna be having the top stitching threads as well, because I think that looks really effective when working with denim. So if you have a contrast top stitching thread, we've got some of those arriving in this to the studio and we'll be putting them online as well in time for the jeans masterclass, which will be great. Um, I hope you found something there that's inspired you today. Anything else I've got to show you? We've got the... Oh yeah. Yes. Oh, let me move those out of the way. So I just want to show you the linens again because actually this was working really nicely. This is Soapy Cove, which is a gorgeous, soft kind of aqua green colour. But I've noticed actually that the nice thing about these stripy cuffing pieces is that they have different colours in here. And there's a very nice, really lovely, thin little stripe of that colour. So actually, they go really nicely together. So a regan, a nice linen regan would be fabulous. I'm really quite liking that idea. Um, oh, Debbie says, what's the, hold on, let's have a quick look. Uh, Catherine, what's the lightest weight denim we sell? At the moment, Catherine, it's the eight ounce, which is the one I've just shown you. That's a proper denim. Anything lighter than that turns into a chambray, really. Um, which we don't have at the moment, I think. No, we don't have any at the moment. Um, so it would be that one, which is the the uh, eight ounce, which is nice. It's actually a really nice weight to work with, to be honest. Um, Debbie says, what size jeans workshop? Debbie, it's whatever you want to do. You provide the pattern and then we show you how to make it and fit it and then make up the jeans. So you can decide what kind of pattern you want to work with. A lot of people are using the uh, um, closet core patterns. This used to be called closet case, but now it's closet core, core I think. The um, boyfriend jeans and the ginger jeans, the skinny jeans. But to be honest, there's loads of denim patterns out there now. Um, I know Merchant and Mills do one. Um, I know Megan Nielsen does one. So it's whatever pattern you want to bring with you. Um, we send you more information if you are if you want to come to the the workshop. We can send you information on what you need, um, but yeah, whatever size you want to make really, because we help you fit and uh, get the pattern to work for you, which is a nice one to do. Uh, Susan says next time I think you're coming down to your area. Is there any public transport near us? Unfortunately, no. That I believe there is a bus that comes out of Stratford towards Shipston, um, but we are in the countryside in a barn conversion unfortunately but we do have plenty of free parking right outside so if you can drive to us then that's great um but otherwise we yeah public track or get a cab that'd be one way to do it i suppose um but we're not really a shop shop which is why we're kind of off the beaten track now um people can come and visit us if they want to make an appointment that's okay but um we don't really kind of have a shop front anymore because we are literally in a barn and this is where we do all the workshops and stuff so this is why we've moved everything online so um or everything that we've got now is pretty much i would say 99.9 .9 of everything that we've got is online and we're adding to it constantly so hopefully there'll be something in there that you like i know people want to come and feel fabrics and stuff but we're not really kind of doing that at the moment yet um, and as I said, we're more of a studio rather than a shop. So there we go. Now I like those two. Um, we have got the navy here as well. Which is what I'm wearing today. And again, this kind of goes with everything. Navy is the new black, isn't it, really? And actually that cuffing goes quite nicely with that one too. Um, I love linen. It's my favourite fabric, as you probably know, um, and it goes with everything and it works with, I would say, all of our patterns, to be honest. 
Um, so I'm hoping, because I know I've been going on for about an hour now, and my computer's about to run out battery, so um, have a fabulous weekend. We're going for walkabouts at the Also Festival at Compton Verney. If you're local to Stratford, give it a look because it looks quite cool. Um, I can't wait to uh, listen to Philippa Perry from uh, Grayson Perry's wife. She's going to be doing a talk there as well, which is really interesting. Um, hopefully I won't need my wellies too much this weekend. Hopefully you'll stay dry as well. And we'll see you next week for Technique Tuesday. So enjoy your weekend and we'll see you then. Take care.